Hey everybody, Nuri Transformed here again, and today I have the Transformers Generations Deluxe Class Warpath. Uh, this is from the old Generations line, the one from, let's see, around 2008-2009? Uh, this came out, or no, like, Universe have been 2009-2008-ish, so probably about 2010-2011-ish. Basically, there was Classics, then there was Universe, then there was Generations, and now we have Generations 2013 that transitioned into Combined Wars. Anyway, this is the Warpath from the, uh... Older generations line, and he's a deluxe class as you can see. He is a tank. He's an H tank, as you can see, with the four sets of treads. I do not know from my read that he's not based on any actual tank, but he kind of reminds me of like an old, maybe like 1950s style tank. You can see he's a dark red, which is Warpath colors. And normally, I'm all about something being the same. I'm all about scale, so you would think I would want a Legends Warpath, but. He is called Warpath, and he is a tank. I feel like he deserves to be a deluxe. Plus, the newer Warpath from Kamai Wars just looks ugh. He's got a tank. He's got the cannon on his arm. That's a Megatron thing. This is why you don't repaint Megatron into Warpath. Anyway, let's go do size comparisons. Since I think they look pretty well together, here's Power Glide. They kind of both have that same kind of 1940s, 1950s aesthetic to them, which looks very nice next to each other. Plus, I believe they're both Season 2 characters. Um, Kabar Wars Brawl? Eh, a bit smaller, but also a lot wider. And just for our tank comparison, Tank Gore. So, yeah, that's all the newer stuff that it's compared to. Uh, if we look on it, you can actually see a couple things. You can see K490W, which is actually Kapow. And on the other side, we got. Z O W or no Z zero W three 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 or Zowie, which is kind of how he talked in the cartoon. You know, he's like Kapow, Zowie, boom. You know, he he basically said things you normally see in a comic. It was really interesting. It's kind of nice to see a reference to that. You also see black Autobot symbols tampled on there. It's kind of nice to see something that goes with the color scheme, because a red and silver one would stick out pretty bad on this guy actually, with his dark red, gray, silver, and all that good stuff. You see these treads are actually nicely painted silver, and they got wheel fake wheels, of course. It's got a nice black bit of paint here, and you might notice something I have already customized for my figure. As originally, spring load missile, the missile had this. And no, I did not break it, I actually did customize this on purpose, because originally, when you had the missile in, you had a tail of it sticking out that far. Yeah, that just was awkward. So I just kind of snapped it off right there. And if I get some sandpaper, I will sand it down, but... I know I really shouldn't uh, review figures after I customized them, but it was bugging me so much. It just was so ugly. You might also notice some bars on him. These bars are C-clips. You see two in the back and two in the front. Uh, during Generations, they had weapons that were coming on little clips. They also had some Human Lions figures have this as well. And so that way other figures could clip their weapons to each other. Later it was figured out, hey, let's just do uh, peg holes and just have everybody able to use each other's weapons because everybody's weapons are the same size anyway and have the same handhold. But at the time it was an interesting idea to have figures that could purposely use other figures' weapons. And Warpath did come with a weapon anyway, although, yeah, this and these and yeah, he doesn't really need them. Uh, as you can see, he is a tank. He he actually does have an articulation technically in this mode because the cannon can move up and down and rotate fully. We do not see these with tanks any, with our tank figure transformers anymore. And it's not like this piece just sits on his back. This piece is actually transforms into his chest. And yet, despite that, it's still able to rotate fully and even um, move the cannon up and down. So really, no excuse has broke his hey, This guy's chest is directly transformed into his chest, yet he's still able to do all this fully. Um, the missile launcher does, of course, spring-loaded fire the missile. Oh, this uh, gets stuck sometimes, but... Nah, I'm not gonna do it today. Oh, there we go. There, you saw it. It launched. And then he does have, like, a little pod launcher here. So he is fully armed for a tank. He is powerful. This is what I would call a perfect classic style figure in my opinion because his tank and his robot mode both like revolutionized his original character very very well. Speaking of which, why don't we get him into robot mode? To start off you're going to want to come back here and open up these panels and these will fold back 
basically just collapsed in on themselves. Go ahead and flip out the fist. Oop, come on. There you go. And close the panels back up. They don't, they don't like have any locking them in. The panels just sit there, but they are very stiff, so they don't come loose at all. And they look fine, so. And that gives him his arms. You're gonna come up here, and these pe these are actually clipped together. This piece is clipped onto these. And these will fold down. There's a hinge right back here that folds down on. And then when you get to the air, that fold down his crotch. And in there, you just fold down his hips. Split these. These are kind of interesting. These actually reuse the clips for different purposes. Come back here, you can actually see they're tabbed in. The treads are actually tabbed in sideways. And once you get them off, To show you this, they're, clipped, they're tabbed in like this. You got the when you tab untab them, you're gonna have to push them down, and then this whole piece that the tread was originally inside folds in instead. So the tab that was originally here now folds into here and clips that in, and then the tread pushes back up and locks the foot the leg together. That has such a cool piece of engineering for his leg. Come over here, I'll show you it over here as well. Untab, fold the tread out. Fold it back in to where it tabs in. Press it in. That is such a cool piece of engineering. That that really really uses that really uses his uh, bulk to the best of his ability, and really gives him some nice sturdy legs while also keeping a very big tank. His chest also has some very cool. His arms and legs have really cool engineering, but his chest has some cool stuff too. His whole panel folds down. You can see that's basically his chest plate. But right before you completely close it, you're going to want to fold the tip in. You can see there's this tab in there, and there's, a, there's a tab hole in there, and a tab on the pit, on the tip. You're going to want to mostly fold it, and then fold them in together to make the chest. Come back here, grab the weapons, they're on hinges, just fold them inward to give them more room. And then this whole piece rotates. There's a hinge here that the uh, crotch came down on before. There's a hinge back here you can see right there. And that folds the whole tank down. Or the gut, the cannon of the tank down. And pegs into the crotch. Then, for the head transformation, you take the cannon and you push it in. And now it pops his head. You can see his head's right there. The flap covers it. And pop goes the weasel. And there is Warpath. In his robot mode. Let's go ahead and get the comparisons out of the way. Here he is next to Brawl. Oh, if Brawl can stand, yes, I have some issues with him. Uh, how about Tankor, who has some similar ideas with the tread feet and the can over shoulder cannons? And Power Glide. So you can see he's about average sizes, you know, a little bit taller than some of the newer deluxes. And much taller than Legends, of course. Come on, Power Blade. He is what I would call an absolute perfect example of a classics figure. Maybe not perfect, more of the absolute best I can find. His robot form looks like a much more advanced form of his ro original robot. Much more modern, much tougher, much just overall very warpath without overdoing any attributes. Same word for his tank mode, very much an evolved version. And his, and his transformation is just so cool and fun. It's both unique with all the different stuff it can do, yet still a lot of fun. I never get tired of transforming him, ever. Both ways, it's a lot of fun, too. Let's take a look at the details itself. His, his tank mode was originally very red, just stock red with a little bit of color. Here you see, despite that, they've managed to get a lot more color in without overdoing it. Rather than putting in a bunch of bright colors, he more just has more of the similar colors just more of the other ones, right, and just the red. Let's take a first look at that head sculpt. My only real issue with this figure is that he has light piping, and the light piping does not work too well because it has this panel back here. I don't mind the panel itself, it just blocks his light piping is all, so he looks dead-eyed most of the time. That is my only issue, my one issue with this figure. But if that is his only issue, I can live with it because he's going to be sitting on my shelf anyway. And you see, I can't really quite get the light piping to work. But that's fine, we can just have him be like a dark knight where you can't really see his eyes at all. That face sculpt, though, that is just so dark and just... So dark and menacing looking for an Autobot. That's the thing, this is an Autobot, you know. 
same side as Power Glide here, who also has a similar face, but very happy, nice looking. These guys have almost the exact same idea for color scheme and, and, trans and transformations and even vehicle modes with the old 1940s, 50s look, and even kind of the same face sculpt, but they do it so differently just from sheer color changes and sculpting. Power Glide comes off as happy and nice and friendly, while Warpathor comes off as well like he wants to crush your skull in. Which, Dialogue's kind of neat though. Also, for some reason, my camera is showing this cannon as a bright red, when really it's only a slightly... It is brighter red than the dark here, but not as bright as the camera showing. The camera showing this as being like bright red. But in reality, it's probably more of a maroon. Like, this is dark maroon, this would be a lighter maroon. But understandable, it's probably just help with the plastic they use to make sure the cannon didn't break easily. As you can see, he still has all of his weapons from uh, his tank mode just kind of collapsed in. His tank, his cans in his chest, and uh, weapons are still over his shoulders, just kind of further in. As for the paint, you can see he reuses he either reuses the, it from his tank mode to kind of help break it up, or he brings in some new stuff. The shoulders before you couldn't see due to uh, to the tank being folded up like this, and this is the cool thing: they actually blend in with the treads. Before you really couldn't see these too well because they were on the bottom of the treads. Now you can get a good clear look at these gold and silver details. Little vents and pipes going up his shoulders. That head sculpt still, I, I love this head sculpt. The silver venting on the sides. Just how messy he looks. He looks like a soldier. He looks like he's ready to kick your ass. And I can't believe they haven't really done any repaints for, of this. Like besides maybe BotCon and um, probably a TFCC figure. I don't think they've really done. I don't think Hasbro has ever done any official repaints. Uh, you do got this great transformation piece here, but it kind of blended with the silver paint. That's kind of like a good grill on either side. Got some gold in the crotch. You do got two different grays here. You got the, the light gray for here and on, on his other side of his chest. You got the dark gray for his arms and his legs. And of course, his feet are the treads, which give him a very powerful look. He looks like he's ready to just kick. Like, you give him poses like this and he looks threatening. He looks like he's ready to pound your face in. And of course, you got treads on the bottom, which bulk him. He really likes to use his bulk. He really uses that bulk to the best he can. And it really does give him a very good, nice look. And I really love it. Um, no kibble, really. He has, like, the edge of his back of his tank sticking off. That's about it. And on the insides of the arms, you can actually see piping details, kind of trying to imply that his arm's extending outward. Which, going out this far, it looks kind of awkward, but having it just about here, like going from here to here, it kind of gives the illusion that piping is kind of extending his arm. And it just looks really cool. I think he's a really cool looking figure. Um, articulation wise, his head swivels. Swivel at the shoulder, very tight. Outward movement, swivel above the elbow, elbow goes 90 degrees, hands can technically move up and down, but you can't really do much with them. Nothing at the waist, but considering how it coordinates together, it's fine. Hips, they yeah, are ball jointed, very tight. Can only go out this far because of the sculpting, but yeah, that's enough for Warpath. Swivel above the knee, a good 90 degree knee with the shin guard covering up the knee joint, looks really good. And you can technically get some ankle movement out of him. Due to how the tank, how the treads transform, which again can give you a very good. Oh yeah, the head can technically go back a bit because how it transforms. The cannon might get in the way a little bit, but you can adjust if you want, so you can get kind of more of him looking forward. And you can see just how cool some of these put. He poses himself really. It really does get really easy to put him in some really nasty looking poses. If he had a waist joint, he'd be perfect. It would be absolutely perfect if he had a waist joint, but I can understand why he does not have that. But like I said, he just... He's the everything that's great about, tra about universe, classics, generations, combined wars, all those lines. Just a modern, really good update of a figure, keeping that original look while making it, while making it look better and more detailed than ever. And just really, really cool transformation. I really hope he does eventually get some repaints of some kind. I don't know how many he could fit, but I don't know who he could really be, but at the same time, it's such a nice figure that I kind of feel sad that he hasn't gotten any repaints. Anyway, I'm Nerdy Transformed. I hope you enjoyed this review, and honestly, I hope you get this figure, because he really is a beautiful figure. 
Anyway, take care.